I can't think of a more fitting game than Mario Kart to follow on from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild for Nintendo Switch. It gives something completely different with multiplayer, short bursts of gameplay and it's another fine example of Nintendo at their very best. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe isn't a brand new game, but a remaster of the fantastic Wii U original from 2014. That said, Nintendo have actually made a number of changes to the game, both big and small. So beyond the game now running at 1080p and 60 frames per second on Switch, here's 8 things that make Mario Kart 8 so very, very deluxe. First up is Battle Mode. Nintendo have heard the cry of anguish from their fans at the woeful interpretation of Battle Mode in Mario Kart 8 on Wii U, having just reused race tracks for Battle Mode? I mean, come on, that just stinks. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe rewrites the script, not just with the inclusion of Balloon Battle, but with other game modes. You've got bomb bomb Blast, which is a Balloon Battle variant, you've got Coin Runners, where you have to dash around trying to pick up as many coins as possible, Shine Thief, where you have to grab and try to survive with the Shrine for 20 seconds, and Renegade Roundup, with one team chasing after the other and trying to lock them up in jail. All of this happens across eight new and returning battle arenas built specifically for battle mode. One of these is actually themed around Splatoon's Incopolis, as another example of Mario Kart becoming more of an all-round Nintendo game these days. Our second big addition is ad hoc multiplayer. For a home console like the Wii U, there wasn't really any point in having this built into the game, but with the Switch being perfect for taking on the go, you can now have up to 8 people connecting directly to each other over Wi-Fi, or 12 people connecting over Ethernet. You can play in all sorts of screen sharing configurations as well. Local multiplayer that is just on the console you can do with split screen up to 4 people, whilst online and ad hoc network play allow two people to share a screen. So to hit that eight player limit for local Wi-Fi play, you just need four switches and you can, you know, pop out those Joy-Con and share screens like that. Our third difference is being able to hold two items at once. That's right, a little like in Double Dash for GameCube, you can now carry two items at once. It's a fairly simple little change, but it adds a lot more strategy to the game, I feel, or failing that it's simply getting people to use items a bit more. However, unlike Double Dash, you always have to use items in the order that you pick them up. You can't switch back and forth. There's also now double item boxes, so you can grab two items at once, and you can bet that people will be aiming for that double box if it's there and available. Speaking of item boxes, number four is that there's a couple of new items. The feather is new for battle mode, and it allows you to do a high jump to avoid bananas and shells, or to jump over someone and steal their balloon. It kind of feels like a bomb deal, and it's very, very tricky to use compared to the return of Boo in races, which turns you invisible whilst Boo heads off to steal an item off someone else for you to use later. Number 5 is 200cc time trials and new 200cc ghosts. Though 200cc was patched into the Wii U version of Mario Kart 8, giving people an actual reason to use the brake button is brought even further into the fold in Deluxe with new 200cc time trials. All of the old 150cc trials are still there and the developer records are still there to be again, but you can now toggle 200cc mode and test your metal against even faster times and depths. Number six in our list is the Pink Boost. Now, here's a move for the veteran players. Holding a drift around a corner for long enough can now eventually go from a blue boost to a yellow boost and finally a pink boost. Where the blue boost pushes you along for about half a second and yellow boost for about one and a half seconds, a pink boost is well worth two and a half seconds of extra speed. And that can make all the difference when trying to catch someone up. It's not the only new move in the game though, with Battle Mode getting its own bespoke U-turn move where you can pull a handbrake turn by holding A and B and a direction at the same time to spin around on the spot almost. Number 7 is Auto Steer and Auto Accelerate, and this is one which is much more for the novices out there where Pink Boost is for the more advanced players. Auto Steer pops a little antenna onto the back of the cart and this lights up when you get a bit too close to an edge or a barrier and it tries to gently push you back on course. Meanwhile Auto Accelerate just makes your cart go forward, I mean, duh. 
neither is really going to propel you into first place. They're just assists and pretty handy for people that maybe aren't so great at the game, meaning that they have less to worry about so that they can focus on maybe just steering in general and throwing items. You do need to be aware that auto steer and auto accelerate are turned on by default, but thankfully they are easy to turn off and it's something that the game remembers for your particular controller. Number 8 is more characters. There's a bunch of new and returning characters in the game including King Boo, Dry Bones, Bowser Jr and both Inkling Boy and Girl from Splatoon. These join the whole roster from the original game and additions like Link and Animal Crossing characters that were added in the DLC packs. One difference is that you don't have to unlock any of these characters as you play, they are all just there to play with from the very start. Okay, we said 8 changes, but here's 2 quick bonus changes that would actually take us up to 10, but I'm keeping them separate because I think they're more negatives than anything else. So, Kind of 9, Mario Kart TV returns, letting you save and view highlight reels from your races, but where you could upload these to YouTube on the Wii U version of the game, there's no such option to do so on the Switch at the moment. Either Nintendo are going to add this in later, or they might be waiting to bring the system software level video capture to the table to facilitate this instead. I suspect that Nintendo are either going to add this in a patch down the line, or they're waiting to add video capture to the system software instead. Number 10 would be that all of the vehicles and unlocks have had a little rejig, mixing in all of the parts from the two DLC packs. Sadly, that also includes the free DLC that I don't think anybody anywhere thought was a good idea. The Mercedes GLA cars are being rolled into Mario Kart 8 Deluxe whether you want them or not. And one final point, none of this is being rolled back to the Wii U version of the game to the best of our knowledge. There's no double items, no added characters, no new battle mode, and it's all a bit of a shame because without all of these changes, we could have had cross-platform play between Switch and Wii U, and it would have been glorious. Alright, I promise I'm completely out of points to make. Uh, this has been a look at the differences between Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and Mario Kart 8 for Wii U, and we've got a review up on the SigTaxis.com very soon. In the meantime, please do like, subscribe, and perhaps even share this video with others if you've enjoyed it, and I hope you'll join us again soon. Goodbye!